Hello, I'm Luis Serrano and this video is about one arm bandits and the beta distribution. The problem is simple. Imagine that we are at a casino and there is a slot machine also called a one arm bandit as it has, well, one arm. When we play with this machine, two things can happen. Either a coin comes out or nothing comes out. Now imagine that in this casino there is an entire row of machines and we want to really do well at this game. So we want to play at all of the machines and hopefully figure out which ones are good and which ones are bad so we can maximize our gain. It turns out that all the machines are different and that they have a probability that we get a coin. The probability is called P. So for example, if the machine on the left has a P of 0.1, that means that we expect on average that 10% of the time we play this machine, we get a coin and 90% we get nothing. The machine on the right has a P of 0.7, which means that we expect that 70% of the time we get a coin and 30% of the time we don't. The problem is that we don't know the values of P, so we don't know what these probabilities are of winning. The only way to find out is to play at the machines and try to estimate these values. So we want to play at the machines and find out the probabilities of winning, so we want to play all of the machines, but we also want to capitalize on the good ones. Therefore, we need to devise an optimal strategy for this. So now the question is, what is the best strategy to play at these machines? One strategy is the explore strategy, which consists in playing all the machines many times. Once we play them many times, we can start estimating the probabilities of winning. For example, if we play the first machine 15 times and two times we get a coin, we estimate this probability to be 2 over 15. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't, but from what we have and from what we've seen, this is the best estimate. Then we play the second one and we notice that we get 9 over 15, so that's our estimate. For the third one is going to be 12 over 15. For the fourth one is going to be 3 over 15. And for the last one is going to be 6 over 15. So after this, we conclude that the best one is the third one, since it has the highest probability of winning based on what we've seen. And the second one is also OK. And the other three are no good. So here's the strategy. We're going to focus on playing the third one all the time, and maybe the second one every now and then to mix things up. That's a pretty good strategy. However, it has a problem. We have to play each machine many, many times, which is not optimal. For example, the first machine didn't give us many coins for a while, and we continued playing it even though it didn't look very good. Maybe we could have figured that out earlier. So that's what the next strategy is. We come to the second strategy, which is the exploit strategy. We play each machine less times, let's say just two. And from there, we look at the data and conclude that the best machine is the second one. And the other ones are not very good. However, what happens here? Well, we miss the fact that the third machine was the best one because it didn't give us very good results. And in short, we didn't explore the space enough to gather enough information. So we need our best strategy which is a combination of the two. It's called explore exploit. So in this strategy, we try all the machines, but we try to pick the machines that are winning more while still giving the bad machines the occasional chance to redeem themselves. And we get that the third machine is the best one. So next, I'm gonna show you this technique in a more detailed way using probability distributions. And the distribution we're going to use is the very popular beta distribution. Now today I will tell you everything you need to know about it, but if you want to know more about it, I have a video on my channel called the beta distribution and where I explain it in a lot more detail. So I invite you to take a look. The link is in the comments. So the beta distribution works as follows. Imagine that we have a machine that we've played three times and we got a coin twice and nothing once. We can imagine that the value p equals two thirds is a pretty good estimate for the probability of winning. In fact, it's the best estimate we can make. However, we don't have a lot of confidence on this value since we played the machine very few times. The value could have easily been one half or three quarters or anything similar. Now imagine that we play the machine 30 times and win a coin 20 out of those 30 times. Again, we estimate that the probability of winning is two thirds, but now we have a much higher confidence in our, in our estimate. And finally, if we play the machine 300 times and we win a coin 200 out of those 300 times, we can again estimate the probability of winning is two thirds, but this time with a lot more confidence. So the beta distribution helps us formalize this logic. 
The beta distribution is the distribution of the probability of winning given the number of times we won and lost. For example, here is the beta distribution for the first case. The peak is at two thirds because P is most likely two thirds, but as you can notice, there are many values that P can take with high probabilities. On the other hand, here's the beta distribution for the second case. Again, the peak is at two thirds and the P value can take many values, but most of them are much closer to two thirds. So it's likely that P is close to two thirds. And finally, here's the beta distribution for the third case. We peak again at two thirds, but it's very skinny since most of the values that P can take are very, very close to two thirds. Therefore, we have great confidence that the P value for this machine is something really close to two thirds. And in this graph, the height is the likelihood, it's not the probability, but imagine taking a random point inside this curve. So for example, this point over here can lie with equal probability in any area of the curve. So it can go pretty much anywhere with highest probability at around two thirds. If we take a point over here and it lives underneath the curve, well, it can be in many places, but it's more likely to be close to the two thirds. And finally, if we're under the third curve, well, there's not many places the point can go and it can pretty much only go around two thirds. It can be any other, many other things, but with very, very, very low probabilities. And the formula for the beta distribution is the following. Let's say we played the machine and won A times and lost B times. Then the density function is f of x equals x to the A times one minus x to the B. And that's the height of the function underneath of the blue curve. Actually, there was one more term because we want the area under the curve to be one for it to be a probability distribution. And so this term is B of A plus one, B plus one. And that's a, a continuous version of the binomial coefficient. This distribution, we call it beta of A plus one, B plus one. And by convention, the parameters are always plus one from the number of times we won and lost. So here we have the formula for the beta distribution of the first case where we won two times and lost once. Here it is for the second case where we won 20 times and lost 10 times. And here it is for the third one where we won 200 times and lost 100. So the first is beta 3, 2. The second is beta 21, 11. And the third one is beta 201, 101. So now we get to the technique that I really want to show you, which is called Thompson sampling, and it works as follows. What we're going to do is always keep track of the beta distribution corresponding to our wins and losses for each machine. So as we start, everything is beta of 1, 1, because we have zero wins and zero losses. And remember that we have to add one to these numbers to get the parameters of the beta distribution. Now let's say we play the first machine, so and we win, then we get beta of 2, 1. So we update this. If we play the second machine and lose, then that becomes beta of 1, 2. But if we play it again and we win, then that becomes beta of 2, 2. And we continue in this fashion, playing machines and updating their beta distribution. And every time we have more information. Now, you may be wondering, how do I select which machine I'm going to play? And that's the point of the game. So this is what the main step is. Imagine that we've played the machines many times. And here are our beta distributions. So in order to pick the next machine, what we're going to do is we're going to make them compete with a little bit of randomness added. And the idea of the competition is that the strongest machines should have more probability of winning and the weaker machines should have less probability of winning. But also if we have machines that have not been explored very well, they should also be given a slightly high probability of winning so that we can explore them more. So here's how the competition works. What we're going to do is pick a random point from each of the beta distributions corresponding to the machines. And now we're going to take the value of the x coordinate at that point. And the machine that gave us a higher value is the one that wins. So in this case, the third machine won, which you can also see it's the strongest. And so we're going to play that machine next and then update the beta distribution and then continue. Now, why is this technique good? Well, let's look at three different machines. The one in the left has proven to be pretty successful because it has good results. Its beta distribution is heavily skewed towards the right. Therefore, if we pick a random point in the distribution is likely to be a high value. So a successful distribution is likely to win at the competition and likely to get picked. 
Now, a machine like the one in the middle that hasn't been explored very well, we don't know if it's good or bad yet, and its distribution is very wide, so a point underneath it could have a high value and also a low value. So this is not as strong as the one on the left, but it's also likely to get picked occasionally. So unexplored machines are likely to get picked. A machine like the one in the right that has proven to be a pretty weak machine has a beta distribution that is heavily skewed towards the left. So if we pick a random point here, it's very likely to give us a small value. So unsuccessful machines are unlikely to get picked. It could still happen that it returns a high value and it gets picked, or that the other ones happen to return low values, but with less probability. And that is why this technique is good, because it helps us explore the entire space while capitalizing on the strong machines and also capitalizing a little bit on unexplored machines. And that's it, that's Thompson Sampling. Thompson Sampling is wonderful because it has many applications in real life. One of them is A-B testing, for example, in web design or in advertising. Let's say we have several designs to test for a website or for an ad, and we can use Thompson Sampling to find out which ones users click more while still trying to maximize the number of clicks. In medicine, it's also very used when we try to decide for example, what experimental drugs to give to patients in order to test them, but also in order to maximize the gain from the drugs that have proven to be successful. And of course, as this video hints, one can apply Thompson sampling to gambling in order to try to win the most, while still exploring many possibilities in the game. And that's all I have to say about Thompson sampling, so thank you for your attention. I would like to thank my friend and former colleague Tom Denton, who explained this to me. He is a wonderful mathematician and computer scientist that has a great blog called inventingsituations.net. You should take a look because he has a lot of posts like this video. And as usual, I'd like to remind you that I have a book called Grokking Machine Learning, where I explain supervised machine learning in a nice and friendly way with examples, with stories, with drawings, and a lot of code. So if you enjoyed this video, you may like the book. Here is the link to get it. And I also would like to give you a 40% discount code called SeranoYT. All these links are down in the comments. Thank you very much for your attention. If you like this video, please subscribe, please hit like or share it amongst your friends or throw me a comment, especially if you have any topics you'd like to see. Many times I create videos from topics that people suggest in the comments. Or if you'd like to tweet at me, my Twitter is LewisLikesMath. Or if you'd like to see all this information put together, go to this link, serrano.academy. Thank you very much and see you in the next video.